Our voices. Our stories. Our community. A new mosaic. In 2012, Saskatchewan's Premier Brad Wall announced that construction on a new open-air stadium in Regina would begin in 2013. This is a very historic venue for football in North America. Lots of great memories at this particular facility. But I think if you climb the stairs and seen the concourse and experienced all there is to experience here at Mosaic other than the football, we know that the status quo is not on. I'm pleased to announce today on behalf of the province of Saskatchewan that together with our partners, the City of Regina and the Saskatchewan Rough Rider Football Club and all of their respective corporate sponsors and all of you, Rider Nation, that we will begin construction on a new 33,000 open air stadium in 2013. The massive undertaking would take nearly four years to complete and involve several key personnel, including Mark Williams, a principal with HKS Architects. It actually started, uh, a couple of us from HKS came up very early on, uh, came to a couple games, and soon after that we uh, entered a really international competition. And it was us and a couple other firms at the beginning that had to go through a process to win the project. So we went through a pretty lengthy series of meetings here in Regina and at the end got selected as a design firm with PCL as the contractor to do the project. I'm Mark Sylvester, Coordinator of Social Inclusion, the Community Services Department, City of Regina. It started for us with the community development approach and building strong relationships and using strong processes to engage the community and re-engage the community. We first started that process in 2014 um, where we had a public meeting. We invited 14 accessibility organizations, the riders, Evraz, the consultants, architects, uh, season ticket holders and general residents, uh, 45 people. In we heard feedback from the community and laid the foundation for us moving forward for the next three years. My name is Daryl Stubel. I'm the Executive Director for the Office of Disability Issues for the province of Saskatchewan. When the provincial government committed to providing a loan or some funding to the stadium, you know, with my job and with our the role of our office, we said, you know, we better, you know, um, make sure that we we do this. It's an opportunity to do this right. So, we kind of asserted ourselves, connected with Mark and, and his team at the city of Regina, and said, you know, um, let's work together to make sure that we develop a stadium that could be, um, you know, very accessible. Because the old Taylor Field, or old Mosaic Stadium at, at Taylor Field, was built, you know. Um, a long time ago and uh, it was really showing its age and uh, you know the the idea of having a new stadium and a new opportunity to you know do some really unique things was uh, really exciting so uh, you know, look forward to it. Richard Harmon was a community member of the Accessibility Advisory Committee which was consulted throughout the building process of the new stadium to ensure it met the accessibility needs of the citizens of Regina. We have been around for several years and advising the city administration and the city council on accessibility features and requirements in that in, within the city of Regina. My name is Michelle Bush. I'm the Accessibility Advisory Committee Chair. The stadium folk, I guess, came to the Accessibility Committee and said, we want to build a new stadium. We'd like input from the committee about a, accessibility features that maybe the old stadium doesn't have that we could implement in the new stadium, things that the stadium has that we could carry over. Uh, and they just kind of kept us in the loop to make sure that the stadium is inclusive for everybody who wants to attend football games or concerts or events. As Mosaic Stadium began taking shape, additions were made to enhance accessibility as well as the fan experience. When it comes to accessibility, you almost find that you can never please everybody. So, you know, what's accessible for one person may not be accessible for the next. So, you know, trying to find the ultimate or the way you can build something so that it meets the most pe meets most people's needs is is um is quite a challenge. But um, you know, from the old stadium to the new stadium, uh, it's night and day. Um, it's really uh, an incredible stadium. 
For Mark Williams, designing the new stadium was an exciting process, especially when it came to enhancing the accessibility. If you think about the old Mosaic Stadium and the accessibility inconveniences, you know, they're huge. Very difficult to get it through the stadium and to certain spaces. And so that sort of isolates that community because there's certain areas they can get to and that's it. So just by, you know, us following code and doing, you know, the modern up-to-date things, that is like night and day difference, you know, for the accessibility community in the old stadium and what they will find in the new stadium. It was nice to, to realize that the, the architects weren't just sticking to the bare minimum building code, that they were willing to go beyond that in providing accessible features that were not in other stadiums or not in other cities. And I think it was appreciated. Allard Thomas is the vice president of Saskatchewan Deaf and Hard of Hearing Services. Although he was not an initial member of the Accessibility Advisory Committee, he later became one to ensure the needs of the deaf and hard of hearing community were met. Allard speaks ASL with an interpreter. So the reason I myself wanted to sit on that, that Accessibility Advisory Committee was to make sure that the stadium was deaf friendly for deaf and hard of hearing people. Um, you know, often deaf people may miss alarms, they may miss auditory alarms that could be alleviated by having light flashers or other signaling devices included on them. So those were the kind of things that I was hoping to address. As the stadium project progressed, the city of Regina and its partners continued to work with the accessibility community. We were interested in feedback on the accessibility features. Um, so um, seating, signage, access, um, wayfinding, all those things in hearing feedback from the people in the community that experienced those things. We probably drew the accessibility community together uh, two or three times a year, but we met quite regularly with individuals from the wheeled community, from the visually impaired community, from the deaf and hard of hearing community, from the Office of Disability Issues. We also uh, met with the Saskatchewan Human Rights Commission on a regular basis with that group. So we had a smaller focus group outside of the advisory committee that we worked with and continue to work with. You know, when we have the ability to meet with that community and hear them firsthand, and you know, sort of take that black and white in the code book things that we have to do and actually you know, put faces to that, put the community to that, hear what they have to say, understand you know, maybe some deeper things to them. That's a pretty cool process as architects to go through and, and then have that turn into the stadium. Mark, along with Daryl, a wheelchair user, take a tour around the new Mosaic Stadium highlighting some key features that were the direct results of input from the accessibility community. The other feature that uh, we heard back from the community and the architects shared with us is you'll know uh, the low level for uh, um, booths at the concession stands there um, for those in wheelchairs that can, can wheel up. Yeah, that's, that's about the right height. Perfect. With accessibility to all citizens such an important factor, parts of the stadium and the attached facilities are available for activities year-round. There are spaces throughout the stadium that are 365 days a year. Um, community groups probably use the stadium as much or more than anyone in terms of grassroots soccer, grassroots football, high school football, junior football teams. So from the sport perspective, but the spaces, you know, are adjoined to Confederation Park. Um, there's opportunities to have all kinds of events and there's been lots of events that have occurred since the stadium's open and even before the stadium open. Our community will return after the break. We now return to our community. At historic Mosaic Stadium in Regina, Saskatchewan, the field was at ground level, making all of the seats accessible via stairs or ramp only, something Richard Harmon feels has been improved on greatly. When you enter the stadium, you are on the concourse level. And just to be able to walk around that area, you're not on field level. and that, So you don't have to go up into the stands. 
there is a number of accessible areas in that that are on that concourse level. And then there's accessible seating on all of the levels as well as the box seating. All have accessible seating. Things were considered right from the external before you even get into the stadium. Tr public transit and that is given a priority on, on game day. It is one of the most convenient ways of getting to the stadium. There's accessible parking for people with, uh, who are driving and need to be close to the entrance. Jennifer Cohen has been attending Saskatchewan Rough Rider games for over 40 years. As a power chair user, she sees the new stadium as a major upgrade. I'm a long time season ticket holder for the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. The uh, new Mosaic Stadium, I think, is about anything you can get in a stadium. I think it's as good as it gets. For Greg Whittemore, a senior vice president and associate principal at HKS Architects, the entire design of a stadium hinges on everyone being able to enjoy an event. Accessibility is it's part of code. It's, it's required. It's part of everything you look at in a building has been thought about from how hard it is to open a door or being able to access those doors. I noticed that every door in this stadium is a lever handle. Right. Again, another small detail. Well, yeah, exactly. There's no doorknobs um, in the stadium at all. As Mark Sylvester and Daryl Stubel continue to move throughout the stadium, Daryl notices the gate to the entrance of the accessible seating. You always get people who kind of just mull around the concourse, right? They want to get out and stretch. Having this kind of gated off the way it is, a really good idea because People just start pushing closer and closer, and so if you wanted to grab a beer or something like that, having this um, right. eliminates that problem. Having the ability for everyone to see the game is critical. And so if you, if you look around the stadium, you'll see those in every portion of the stadium, there is some sort of uh, wheelchair seating area for those patrons to be able to see not only see the game, but when the rest of the crowd is standing up and, and cheering, that they're not s sitting behind somebody. They can actually see over them and still see the game. So it's very critical uh, that the entire design of the stadium is always thought about from accessibility standpoint. And if you notice, as you go through the stadium, each level is a different color. And so even if you're slightly seeing impaired, that by the color, you'll know what level you're on. Throughout the design process, we met with the accessibility community here right, right in Regina. They knew what they had at Old Mosaic and how they wanted to fix it. So we listened to them and we incorporated a lot of their ideas into the stadium design. For Mark Sylvester, the improvements in the new stadium are numerous. 70% of the seats are at grade level. Power exists within those accessible seats. Our wayfinding system, we have added nine elevators. Power assisted doors throughout, so the final path of destination helps. We have nine accessible uh, universal inclusive washrooms that are signed all gender, but are also for the community use. And one of those washrooms has an adult lift and, and change table for those with disabilities that have that need. The inclusive washrooms are, uh, this size worked out really well, huh, Darrell? You can have a party in here if you want. It's huge. One of the things is, is that uh, we've learned through the test events, and it worked out really well, was that uh, power chairs do vary in size. It's, it's past the test. Mark and Daryl leave the accessible washroom and stop at an accessible seating location. The power stations are based on feedback from the community. These have worked out pretty well, Daryl, um, for those that have needs. Yeah, so there's a double side on each one, right? Yeah, double side on each one for those that may need to charge their chair or have respiratory needs. Um, there's power available. There's 72 of these throughout the stadium. The plug-ins and the accessible seating for somebody who has a wheelchair battery uh, charger or an oxygen tank, for example, it needs to be plugged in. Not many stadiums that I've been to have that feature. I think of some of the universal accessible washrooms, and it's not just you know for the individual, but sometimes 
people will have um, uh, some assistance with them, and it's you know it's, it's the, a male with a female or vice versa. So do you go to the women's washroom or do you go to the men's washroom? Well, no, you have a choice of nine very accessible washrooms. So you know you've kind of taken that dilemma out of um, which washroom to use. So having a, a lift and, and a, an adult chain station in one of the washrooms. Uh, um, you just don't see that in most public buildings, right? So um, without a doubt, ahead of the curve. As the Accessibility Advisory Committee Chair, Michelle Bush attended the first test event at New Mosaic Stadium, held on October 1st, 2016. At the test event, we had certain issues that came up that they weren't expecting. And it's nice to be able to say, okay, we tried this. Like they ran out of folding chairs for companions because they didn't realize how many people with disabilities would bring a companion. So they addressed that issue and, you know, we're getting more seating. It's nice to be able to tweak all those little tiny things so that on game day, you know that you're going to have the things you need. And it's going to take a while to, there, I'm sure there'll be other things that'll need to be fixed too, but it'll be, it'll, it's, it's getting there slowly. Our community will return after the break. We now return to our community. New Mosaic Stadium has over 100 accessible seating sections located on every level, something which continues to impress Richard Harmon, a wheelchair user himself. When I look at the stadium, I've always been impressed with just the variety of seating and that, that you aren't pigeonholed in that, that this is where you're able to sit and that's it. If you want to sit on this 50 yard line, you can sit on the 50 yard line. If you want to sit on the 20, you can sit on the 20 or the end zone and any of the different levels. You have all these different options and have, having the ability to have your family with you is one of the key features in that with the stadium. For Allard Thomas, the additions made to ensure the safety of all stadium goers is apparent. Well, I noticed that the fire alarms have been equipped with strobe lights and almost every room, in, including hallways, have strobe lights attached to their alarm systems, which is great. Access to a variety of seating options is something Michelle Bush noticed early on. Everybody was sitting on benches at the old stadium. And so it was hard to tell where your spot was and where your neighbor's spot was. Again, with the accessible seating, there wasn't a lot of accessible seating in the old stadium. So if you went to there for a concert or you went there for a rider game, it was, it was very selective as to where you could sit if you had a special need, whether it be an accessible seating or you needed to sit up close, uh, that kind of thing. With the new stadium, everybody has their own seat. There's more uh, space. There's more, many more accessible uh, sections. They're going to put lines on the uh, accessible seating so everybody knows how many spots fit in an accessible um, section itself. But it is a lot bigger space than what it used to be, which is nice because now you have elevators that talk, you have a ramp that you can take, you have accessible alternative signage, braille and large print signage on all the doors. There's four spots for guest services if you need assistance of any kind there's guest services available on each corner kind of thing to give you a hand or find something or that kind of thing. For Mark Williams and Greg Whittemore, the architects, there's more to experience at New Mosaic Stadium than a football game. To see the stadium done is incredible, but you know, we generally know what the stadium's gonna look like from all of our 3D renderings and 3D modeling, but how it's used by the, the fans, you know, of course I won't, excited about seeing the game, but I'm more interested in watching how people react to the stadium, how they use the stadium, uh, and see if there's anything we could do better next time. I think for me, it's, just, it's probably the most special day in the process, and the process is years. You know, it's, a lot of these projects start pushing a decade by the time you first think of a dream and then you actually walk into the door for the first event usually is five to ten years and usually closer to ten. So that's a long time and for us to sit there and watch 30,000 people come in and just like their eyes get huge and they start you know pointing and walking up and touching and that's a pretty cool thing to watch that happen when you know you know the decade history of why things look the way they do. 
when it finally opens, that's what it's all about. As people come in here and you know of those 30,000 people, they're going to remember this day for decades to come. And we're just fortunate enough, you know, to be part of helping that dream come true or that memory be realized by those people. That's probably my favorite thing about, you know, what we do. Mark Sylvester has been a part of the construction of the new stadium since the beginning. I think and, and you'll find out from the accessibility community, this is a statement for accessibility. Certainly we've heard that from folks that have toured it. Um, so we think it's very important for inclusion and accessibility that we have raised the bar and we're gonna to continue to raise the bar. I'm very proud, yeah, it's, you know, it is a deaf-friendly stadium. It is a truly deaf-friendly place to be, and I think that it's safe for most deaf and hard of hearing people in our community, regardless as to who you are. Richard Harmon believes the stadium is important to people outside Regina as well. The stadium doesn't just serve the city of Regina. The stadium serves the province of Saskatchewan, and we have writer fans throughout Saskatchewan. We have writer fans across Canada, and when they come to the stadium, it's as a writer fan. But we have uh, people that come on game day from right across the province. Most people, if you're gonna be a writer fan, you're a football fan of some sort, right? So you wanna be able to go to the stadium. And if the stadium is a barrier to you, then you can't enjoy a game like any, anybody else, right? You want to bring inclusion into the city because that's how people come and enjoy football games is, you know, you build a new stadium, people want to come see it. But if it's not accessible because you're in a wheelchair, you're visually impaired, you're hearing impaired, you have a disability of some sort, it's not going to be as appealing because you don't get to experience the stadium like your able-bodied friends or your able-bodied co-workers because of a barrier. So if you make it barrier-free, then there's no problems. Daryl Stubel sees the new stadium as a triumph in accessibility. When you kind of reflect back on it, it's, it's been a lot of work, uh, not for me personally, but you know, for Mark and his team for sure, and then the city, you know, they, they've done an amazing job, and I think you know, the, the, this new stadium is like a beacon for, for accessibility that everybody should be, be proud of. Producer Adrian Halter, director DOP Adrian Halter, camera operators Mark Beatty, Terrence Snell, sound recordist Terrence Snell, editors Adrian Halter, Andrew Antonello, Sound engineer, Dwayne Kemp. Narrator, Jim Van Horn. Special thanks, City of Regina, Nathan Morrison, Dave Slater, Accessibility Advisory Committee members. Additional footage provided by the City of Regina. Integrated Describe Video Specialist, Emily Harding. Audio Post, Bruce Baclarian, Achira Karinde, Mark Phoenix, Santiago Moffat. Director Production, Karen I. Director Programming, AMI-TV, Brian Perdue. Vice President Programming and Production, John Melville. President and CEO, David Arrington. Copyright 2017, Accessible Media Incorporated.